What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the permaculture world. So, like, I'm, I'm like editing and working through like two or three episodes for this world at the same time, just because I find myself playing it faster than I can um, make time to edit and record footage of it. But anyways, I bamboo grove got moved up here. We now have sweetberry terraces and a little lookout dock here so we can go have a nice look over over this lake and turn around and also look at the the terraces and the bamboo. Um, the terraces give kind of that weird like floaty gravity look that a lot of Minecraft stuff has, so I want to reshape those at some point. But then we got some switchbacks. I prettied up the bridge here a little bit. Um, it actually has, like, struts going all the way down. Looks kind of weird, almost like a generated structure, but um, it's it's good enough for me for now. And then up here, little staircase. Nothing up here yet. Well, I guess there's a bed. Um, I think I might put the enchanting set up here once we get it. But yeah, and then there's the village. So we added some more sugar cane. I extended the root crops and actually kind of regret that now because I think I'm going <laughs> to... Redesign the whole system. Um, that was not good permaculture. That was not starting small. And then we should be able to jump right here. Okay, no, no monsters. Sometimes there's a monster down here when I jump down. And yeah, so as you can see, we have diamond gear now and uh, diamond armor. So I didn't go out looking for diamonds. That's just um, what I got from trading with the villagers. So. I made a weaponsmith table, um, or a grindstone, a workbench, and let's see if we can find our good armor. Yeah, it's this this guy here. So from this armor, we can trade up all that iron armor. So it's just one bit of iron armor per emerald, which is really good trade. And sometimes he gives discounts on those uh, iron boots. And we bring it all over here to our iron cooker. And yeah, so the iron supply is actually pretty fast with, with that ar armor. It's probably the best armor we could have gotten for uh, this purpose. And then we got a toolsmith. Uh, pretty good shovel, actually, on the toolsmith. And I was getting tired of having all our signs and reminders just thrown on one of the houses there. So I started making um, what's going to be kind of like uh, announcement walls. We'll put all our signs and messages on the walls here. We'll make some nice staircases. Um, I tried to kind of work with the shape of the mountain as it was already there. And I forget how much stuff I've done here uh, without y'all. Um, I kind of got rid of the orchard back there and made a 2 by 2 tree garden on this little mound. And the 1 by one trees I just grow over the crops now, which is nice uh, multifunctionality because now I cut down the trees and while their leaves are decaying, I replant the crops so that I uh, pick up the saplings and whatnot just while I'm already running around doing the crops so I don't have to like worry about you know, remembering to come back five minutes later after chopping down the trees to get the leaves. Oh my goodness, there's even more. So uh, I tried to like make a little storage area here and work with the theme of the crops on top. So I kept the logs. Um, and what's nice is this is where the villagers all meet in the afternoon. So we have valuable items, tools. What is this? Terrain blocks, terrain blocks, uh, plant blocks, and then things dropped by living creatures of some kind, and building blocks. We gotta redesign the gourd farm as well, because about half of the stems have been taken out by um, wandering golems and villagers, so they're they're not even growing in straight rows anymore. It's just, it's just chaos in here. And we've got a decent amount of honeycomb now, so we could start doing bees too, so it's just, there's a bunch of different farms we can do, um, but before we get on redesigning, I've got a ton in store for like zone analysis and multifunctionality redesign of our crop systems. Uh, but for this episode, what I wanted to do is I wrote out here, let me make myself bigger again. I wrote out a list of every overworld biome because that's one of our advancements. And you remember one of our long-term goals, in fact, our only long-term goal right now is to get every advancement 
what I want to do today is go out exploring and try to find diamonds. We need at least two to make our uh, enchantment table. Put myself right there. Because we're going to have to do enchanting to get a lot of these advancements. And yeah, see how many, we'll make it multifunctional, see how many biomes we can cross off the list while we uh, go out spelunking. I'm going to do something kind of weird here. I'm going to kind of be a little Masanobu Fukuoka-ish and say, what happens if I don't use F3? So um, just to demonstrate if, you know, you, you haven't done this for whatever reason. I could hit F3 here and we can find our biome on the left hand side here so right now we're on a beach and i am that is the last time i'm going to use that screen to ever check for a biome and maybe ever so from this point on we have to recognize all the biomes just by sight and since we're uh, doing this with pen and paper like we're gonna have to be super meticulous and careful that we don't accidentally cross off a biome that we haven't visited is if we're undershooting, that's okay. Like if I actually have been to one and I don't cross it off, we can fix that. But if we get to the end and we're missing one on our advancements page, but everything is crossed off on my paper list, that's gonna be a problem. Cause then we might have to go do all this again or just go back to F3 screen. A little bit of strategy here. I have uh, color coded the list now because my biggest fear is, you know, for the, like, families that there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of different kinds of forests, of oceans, of hills, that I'm going to mark down the wrong one, and that's going to throw us off later. So if I'm ever not totally sure, instead of crossing off a specific, like, hills biome, I'll just put a tally under, like, a hills kind of general heading I have, and we'll see if we can figure, figure out what's going on from there. And then I went ahead and turns off, turned off shaders... We're doing max render distance, um, turning off shaders so that I can like easier compare what this world looks like to the pictures of the biomes on the wiki page. I'm not going to try to do this without the wiki, guys. We swamp, and I think we should also be safe to cross off lush caves and dark forest because I don't really think there's really any others we could confuse those with. Like we have windswept hills and windswept forests here, just based on the llamas, lack of trees, adjacency. This is gonna get technical, man. It's like we found a meadow. We got flower forest, windswept savanna, and check it out, sunflowers. So that's like one of the last plants we were missing. All right? It looks like we found our diamonds. Sweet. Oh, and this should be... Yep, there's the achievement. Never actually been to a uh, villager outpost, so this should be should be interesting. Huh. This wasn't really worth it. Old growth birch. Found one of those uh, underground igloo things, so... That means... We can get zombie doctor. Oh, wait a second, I just realized also, we have cactus now. Huh. I still haven't found a desert, but that's super funny. We're not going to rescue these guys, but we will leave them a couple beds so they're a little more comfortable down here. I don't know, maybe we'll come back and get them later. And uh, just thinking ahead, because we are in a snowy area, I'm just going to buy some leather boots in case we encounter powdered snow again. And some jagged peaks and uh, just went through some ice spikes. So we're doing pretty good. Um, and the advancements were already uh, sitting at 39 out of 50. All right, man, this boots paid off. Oh, and we get an advancement too. Sweet. Okay, this isn't like super important, but I'm heading back to the jungle we found earlier and I found one of the sheep that we sheared on our way. It still hasn't uh, got its wool back. It's a little guy. We arrived safely back at the, uh, at our village base thing. Probably name it. Anyways, here's, uh, what we got. So a bunch more iron, gold, uh, some diamonds, most importantly. And, uh, so on this list here, you can see a bunch of them are crossed out now. Um, there's actually only seven left on the list that I am sure we have not been to. There's, like, another 
like eight that I'm not sure whether or not we've been to, but if we go down here, we only have seven left. So, you know, process of elimination or pigeonhole principle, whatever you want to call it. Um, that means we know exactly which ones we haven't been to. So it's Badlands, Desert, Eroded Badlands, Mushroom Fields, Sunflower Plains, Warm Ocean, and Wooded Badlands. Actually, dang it. Now that I say it, I'm, we might have been to a Sunflower Plains, although I I don't think we have. Cool. Now we gotta pick something to enchant. Um, you know what, let's do, let's try an Iron Pick. Because we do not have anything with Fortune yet. Oh, I just realized this is gonna be a Horrible enchantment, too. Okay. It's kind of a waste of iron. But we got the advancement. 